Right, continuing right where the previous video left off, we're still in part 025, matrices and plotting, and we're gonna scroll down to special matrix functions. So we've already seen some functions in MATLAB that generate matrices, so I'm gonna run this section, control enter. So all the random number generators that we saw in a previous video generate random numbers inside of a matrix format. So for example, right here, when I do rand n parentheses three, I get a three by three matrix of random normally distributed numbers. If I say rand n five comma two, I get a five row two column matrix, which I have put into a variable named m. Continuing on down, but there's also a special function such as zeros and ones, control enter, and they do hopefully exactly what you'd expect. The zeros function, you give it two numbers, a number of rows, and then a number of columns. I just kept it at five and two here, but I was just using these variable names to make it more readable. And I get a five by two matrix of zeros. Same thing with ones. I use the same five by two right there, and there's my five by two of ones. Maybe you need a different default value. Maybe you need your matrix to be full of sevens. Good, just take the ones matrix and multiply it by seven. And there you go. Now, what if we want to access information in our matrix? For example, we want to get the values along the diagonal. Well, good news, you can use the function named diag. Control enter. So here is my example matrix. And if I want the values from the upper left along the diagonal down to the lower right, I just say diag parentheses, the name of my matrix variable, in this case, A, and I put that result into a variable and display it out. There's the one, five, and nine right there. The developers of MATLAB are very aggressive about their abbreviations. It's not what I would have named this function, but get used to it. Continuing on down, suppose I want the values along the opposite diagonal. Well, how do I do that? Control enter. So I want the three, the five, and the seven. Well, there they are. I got them by using an additional function, and I've nested the functions together or composed them, which is a perfectly valid thing to do. I said, give me the diagonal, not of A, but of the flipler of A. Now, I call it flipler just to be silly, but it's an abbreviation of flip along the left right or flip along a vertical axis running down the center. So flip the left and right sides. That will give me the diagonal of the upper right to bottom left. Continuing on down, run the flipping section, control enter. Let me see if I can resize my window to fit all this on, control enter again. Okay, perfect, great. Now, what my code is gonna be showing you is I have this original matrix right here. I do another flipler, flip left, right. So the left, right mirror image. So this column on the right here. So this column on the right here becomes the column on the left here. And then from that original, I do a flip up down right here. So I take the first row, the four through nine, and it ends up as the bottom row right there. Looking at the code, there's my original matrix. Flip LR to flip it left, right. This is a new matrix, display that out, and then flip UD or flip up down, get a new matrix right here and display it out. Continuing on down. Now, what happens if my matrix is not square and I'm trying to get values along the diagonal? What then? Well, no problem. So here's my matrix. If I just use diag on this matrix, I get four, six, eight, 10, and then nothing more because that diagonal sort of runs out of space. And the code is the same as before. Continuing on down, the identity matrix. So there's a special matrix in linear algebra and other parts of math known as the identity matrix. And this matrix has a very important property. And that is that if you matrix multiply the identity matrix times any compatible matrix, you get that other compatible matrix. It's like the number one with respect to multiplication. Any number that you multiply by one you get that original number. It stays the same, right? It's like adding by zero. So zero is the identity value of addition or subtraction. And one is the identity value of multiplication or division. In matrix multiplication, the identity matrix is a matrix that's all zeros except for ones along the upper left to lower right diagonal. And the identity matrix comes in different sizes. This is a four by four. If I put a three here instead, and my function that's generating it, I should have said, is i, and then the number of dimensions. So there's the three by three. This is, in my opinion, perhaps the worst named function in all of MATLAB. It's named i, like an eyeball. Why couldn't they have just named it identity, or get identity, or just anything related to the identity? Like, they couldn't name it i, because i is already used for the imaginary number. But i? Are you kidding me? 
anyway. We will see more about the identity matrix in the section of this course on matrix multiplication, but I'm going to move on for now. Magic matrices. Magic matrices are, as far as I know, just sort of a mathematical curiosity. You'll see these in like math or logic like puzzle books from time to time. A magic matrix is a matrix such that if you add any of the values in a single row, any single row, they will all add up to the same number, and that number will be the same as the number you get when you add up all the numbers in any single column, or this diagonal, or this diagonal. And we see the verification right here with all these 15s. So I generate a magic matrix 3 by 3, but just by saying magic parentheses 3 in MATLAB. And then I use sum to add up all the columns, because that's how sum works. If I want to add up all the rows, what I can do is add up the transpose of M. And then I can add up the diagonal, and then I can add up, and this really starts to get quite nested and have lots of parentheses, but the other diagonal, the upper right to lower left, by adding up the diagonal after a flip left right. And all of those add up to 15. There are many other matrix generating functions in MATLAB, just oodles of them. But these are the introductory ones that I'm going to share for now, and that is the end of this video.